guys, Kev here, and I have a disassembly to do for you. So, of course, I could not let things be well, and uh, I wanted to take this apart and see if I can make the action just a little bit better. Um, I already messed with the pivot a little bit, and I think I can make it better. Um, cause earlier when I was trying to shake it down, it would even like, it would really be hard to shake down left-handed like this. And now you can see, I mean, it's not like dropping or anything, but it's shaking down instead of up. Uh, so that's good. Um, but anyway, I wanted to just get into it. Maybe it needs a cleaning. We'll look at the bearings. We'll do all that stuff. So still have my spin drum. Of course, this might be a different day for you guys. You'll be uh, maybe happy to know I still have the Arius, although it's only been 20 minutes for me. Um, it did cut me, though. <laughs> I was not paying attention, and I hit the um, I hit the lock bar down here, and it just freaking swung down and got me right in the thumb, which, you know, my fault. So, we're going to need a T10. Check that out. And a T8, which is pretty cool. So, hopefully, we come at it from this side. I like that because um, he, a lot of times, Trevor Berger, at least on my LEXK, it was, oh, there was Loctite in there. Interesting. So maybe somebody did take this apart because I don't think he uses Loctite. Um, Trevor Berger, oh, sorry. My LEXK had T6 all around. It was kind of sad. Uh, but the tooling was so good that it really didn't matter, you know? Um, I got a cloth here, and I'm going to do a couple things while we have it apart. So, um, I always wonder, why do I clean the pivot out like that when I'm going to take it all the way apart? I don't know. But the other thing I want is Knife Shield. It's a new KPL product. You can use my code LEFTY10 for 10% off uh, KPL products. This stuff is awesome, guys. Now, I've mainly used it for... Um, I've mainly used it for um, cleaning off blades that have gunk and shit on them. Like, I've been using uh, my knives a lot lately, cutting cardboard and shit like that, and going through tape, and it really helps get that stuff off, but it also helps prevent rust and stuff. Haven't really been able to test that. Now, I have been carrying this knife, the uh, Brian, sorry, Craig Brown Cortex, uh, in Cortex, man, I'm all over the place, Craig Brown FSD in my back left pocket for about, I don't know, a week and a half now. Uh, it's been literally the only knife in my back left pocket that whole time. I love this thing. I got another one coming. And I did put this stuff on the blade. We had a couple of warmer days, a couple of sweaty days, and uh, no issues. A lot of times folders have issues, but that is a kind of custom heat treat and everything on 154 CM, so CPM 154, so maybe that could be helping as well so here's our t8 i love how he does the full uh pass through screws you can see the tooling's excellent look at that beautiful beautiful screw um he does the full pass through you can see there that there's no screw on that side so no barrel nothing like that i actually kind of like that construction um but i don't know how feasible it is in like oem work Wow, that was weird. Look at this. Jesus. I guess I could have left that on there, but it's okay. So I'm going to put these to the side. We'll clean everything later. I guess we'll take the backspacer out. Really cool there. And um, let's slowly take the blade out. Try to be careful here. Wiggle this guy off. And there we go. So I am going to venture to guess. Yep. So you can see there the clip screw is right there the screws holding in the clip are internal i like that better than on my lexk they were uh external so there's a difference for you um man the bearings just disappear into these um into the cork so here we go there's your pivot and we have the lock bar of course lots of milling which is nice a really robust stop in for this small of a knife uh, you can see there it says zero in here i don't know what that's for i don't know if that's numbering and it says nine i think it says nine i think it's a number nine in there Let's zoom in on that 
Definitely a number nine. Oh, maybe this is too. Interesting. That's weird. So why would that be number nine? And then on the other side of the handle, it says one. I don't know. Could just be the way he does it. Who knows? But the handle definitely says one. So I'm going with that, of course. So I'm trying to get that out of there. A little bit of Loctite. Try to blow it out. I don't know what type of um, lube or whatever MIDI uses or if he even, you know, took this knife apart. It could have been somebody else. Maybe it was never apart since leaving uh, Trevor's shop, which is possible. You can see there, looks like there's an insert and it might be carbonized too. I'm not sure. It's just material on there. It almost look like oil, but could be anything, I guess. You'll see the bearings do run on titanium on these. That's one downside to a lot of custom work, guys. Luckily, he uses an insert because I have, I just have a hell of a time with custom makers and lockstick. Um, and it never seems to go well for me. So hopefully, um, obviously, I didn't notice any issues on this guy. So that's good. I'm just going to get in that pivot a little bit. I try to just shove the, the T8 or whatever the smaller bit is in there then you'll see it kind of gets into the um, pivot screw I'm gonna get the other one because the other one had a loctite on it as well you can see it kind of coming off there so it's good just get that out of here and then what I do is I take it into the alcohol take the correct bit just spin it around a little bit there we go clean off any stuff bearings i want to check these bearings out now like i said his bearings are going to be good to go so i don't really think i need to mess with them unless i don't feel them rolling or anything i'm going to check that in a second but first i want to check the blade it looks really clean like honestly it looks barely used maybe um the detent track is starting to wear in but maybe hasn't been worn in so to speak so it could just need a little bit of break in as well in terms of the the action. So let me check these bearings. Yeah, see they're rolling real nice there. The difference between these and like skiffs are two things. So the cage here is going to be uh, brass, I guess. It's a brass cage, but it's a full cage. A lot of times your stock bearings are going to be stamped brass cages so this is definitely better but skiffs are phosphor bronze um just a little bit of a difference i don't know what it means and then you can kind of see these little ridges on these um i don't know if you can see it. let me zoom in you see those like cuts around the ball i don't know what that is but that's a difference. Skiffs don't have that. Skiffs are just clean on both sides. You see on this side, it kind of just looks normal. And on this side, it has that weird thing going on. I don't know how that matters in any way. But I just want to point it out. So, zoom out. Last thing to clean, I think, is the backspacer here. We didn't clean those screws, but I don't really think they need it. I'm guessing they're all titanium. You know who else does this kind of construction? Uh, Protect does. Except they don't actually cut through to the other side. It's kind of cool how they do it. Um, you'll see here there's no screws on this side. Except for the pivot, obviously. But here they have these two that go through a clamshell. And they go into the aluminum on the other side. Now maybe that's possible because, um, because it's aluminum. You know what I mean? Instead of titanium. I don't know. All right, so I wanted to take some of my, yep, my microfibers here. And I wanted to just clean. So you'll see here, uh, well, you might not, let's see. See if we get anything out of there. A lot of times, even cleaning in there with the cloth and everything, Yeah, we didn't really get anything there, did we? But 
can't hurt. Sure, we got a little bit. Yeah, we got a little bit of shit out of there. Something is better than nothing. I don't know what that meant. Okay, so this is the side we want to put the barrel through. So first I want to clean this. I didn't clean that actually. I don't need to go crazy. I just want to get a little bit of the black stuff out of there. So you will not see a uh, captured pivot on a Trevor Burger. They are spinning, but he does it pretty well. My LEXK had a pivot color. This does not, but there you go. That'll go through. We'll set the bearings on, and then we'll figure out how to put it together because you'll see the uh, the way it works because these screws don't go into a barrel is a little bit interesting. So first, we're going to take our KPL original, get it on our finger here, and we're going to work it into the bearing. And I'm going to face it. I don't know if it's going to make a difference, and it might be different than they had it, but I'll face these sort of ridge things out. So the cleaner side is against the blade. I don't know if that's going to do anything, but I figure uh, it can't hurt. So then I'm going to take a little bit of KPL Heavy. Again, you can get this stuff at knifepivotlube.com. Uh, Lefty 10 will get you 10% off. Now, the microfiber Q-tips are invaluable for getting into areas you can't normally get into. They're small. You can use kpl heavy put it on there and then apply it without having to take the knife apart there's a lot of things you can do um and then the difference between these two is this is a sort of normal weight uh it is a 15 weight oil and this is sort of your bearing oil or just sort of like overall oil right this is what you want to use on like a detent track 75 weight it's gonna sit on this track and it's gonna stay there and that's the key right we don't want this to go anywhere because we want it to work and stay in that area uh, where we want the stuff on the bearings to be a little bit more fluid so that it, it can transfer and do all the stuff it needs to do. And I kind of just smush it there and that kind of gets enough on there. I don't want to go crazy. If you put too much on, you can build up gunk in areas like the detent hole or whatever. So I just don't want to do that. Just trying to push this guy on. There we go. Nice tension. Then I got to do this bearing. So let me put my heavy away. We're done with that. Highly recommend for detent ball tracks and uh, detent balls. So take this. And this is my method of putting oil on a bearing because um, it literally gets it all over the bearings and does not get it all over the knife. It's super awesome. It's the best way to do it. Yes. Oh, wait. Let me make sure I put that in right. I did, huh? Yes, you get a little bit on your finger, but you're going to do that anyway. So get that in there. Boom. All right. Here's the hard part. So this is kind of how I like to do it with these Trevor Burgers. I put these in, right? Then I put the backspacer through. I got to make sure I get this right because I don't know. think that is that right that looks wrong you can tell that that's wrong so we need to flip it like this there that looks normal so then what i do is i kind of hold the backspacer because these need to thread through there but they need to go through the backspacer. it can be a pain so luckily his knives line up really well it's an internal stop pin so to speak um not really but for my purposes of that statement, they are, whatever. I'm an idiot. So you see that popped up there, right? So I'm gonna just start threading very lightly here. Make sure I got it in. I just wanna get it to thread a little bit. The tooling's so good, it's just stick, sticking to the bit. But you gotta love custom builds with good tooling. So there we go. I just wanna make sure everything's flush in place, all that good stuff. And then I kinda open it, right? Just to kinda make sure everything's cool. And I think in this case, I just need to get the pivot in. So I'm gonna use Loctite, obviously. 
This stuff I get from, you. so you can get Loctite from Knife Pivot Lube, again. So if you're just going there to get the stuff I told you about, you know, you might as well just get this. This is their Loctite. It's very good. It's Vibratite. I believe it's their, is it the 121? Um, very good Loctite. I love the liquid, guys. I used to be about the gel and stuff because I used to watch Shabazz and he would use the stick and I thought that was better less mess but it takes so long to cure and sometimes never does this stuff amazing this stuff even better so orionknives.com see it right there david blade banter i don't have a code or anything but he sells this giant thing for five bucks and this is loctite uh 122 or vibratite 122 and it's oil tolerant so even if you have a little bit of oil in the pivot it'll still cure and that's the problem with the gel that's why it won't cure sometimes. Even some of the liquids don't. But I'm telling you, the liquids are better, guys. They they cure so much faster. Um, I've had these cure in like literally 10 minutes sometimes. It's amazing. And you can see I just get a little bit of a ring around the uh, threads. I'm not going bonkers here. And then I kind of just drop the pivot on and try to uh, work it on. So I kind of want to do it by hand if I can, but... The tooling is so good. I should say the threading that it's not going to just drop in. and It's very precise. There we go. So the reason I'm doing it that way is because I have those uh, other screws I'm waiting to tighten. I try to kind of do it at the same time. So slowly shut the knife. And I always want to put, if you're just kind of a tip here. If you're putting the knife together at 90 degrees or whatever, that's fine. Or open, that's fine. Usually people say to do it at 90 degrees because it puts a little, it takes tension off the lock bar. If you open it, it has tension this way. And what you, what you end up doing a lot of times, you put if you put a knife together open, is that lock bar will end up shifting all the way over. And by the time you get the knife together, you'll look and be like, shit, you know? So it's easier just to do it at 90 degrees. Now, if you're if you feel more comfortable just taping the blade off, I would do that um, and just use blue tape, uh, painter's tape. It's the best way to do it. Um, but what I was going to say is if you are doing this and you go to do what I'm doing where I'm closing it before I tighten these and before this is all the way tight, I just wanted to get it going. The blade is going to be shifted over, right? Because it's not tightened all the way. It's not going to be centered. So you might close this and rub against the scale. So just put a little bit of pressure towards the other side so when it comes down it kind of is over to the side if that makes sense so i kind of push a little bit and let it close and then it doesn't rub on the scale or anything hope that makes sense but you'll see it's not centered because of that so i'm just going to take the t8 here try to get into this very tight tooling there we go and another thing to be careful about on specifically Trevor Burgers, but in general, is over tightening. I try to just, it's its kind of a feel thing, guys, but I turn the, the screw until like, and I'm not gripping really hard, right? I'm just gripping normal, and I turn it until it just stops. Like, there's no more, I would have to apply a lot of torque to get it to keep going, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to one break the screw head and two I don't want to strip anything and uh whatever and you can kind of tell by looking on this side on this knife it's almost through the other side and that means it's good you know what I mean they're both about the same now I can deal with the pivot and sorry to you guys who are veterans but I'm just thinking for anybody new it can maybe help to give some of these tips so I'm gonna try to tune the pivot a little bit uh, I am putting pressure on this side because um, it's a spinning pivot. And I may need another driver to do this, but we'll see. Now I got it. So, centering Trevor Burger should be dead nuts every time. So now I'm going to open it without flicking because um, I don't want to mess with the Loctite too much. So you'll see lockup is beautiful now. It was definitely over further before I tighten it all the way. And that's what I'm saying you got to be careful of. So I'm checking for play, no play, no rock. So now I'm gonna check action. Drop, very smooth shake down. So I'm gonna back off just a little bit and see if I can get more. 
Backed off a little bit there. Open. Maybe feel a little bit of something there. Drop. Now that was nice. So let's see if we can replicate that. I mean, it's such a tiny bit of play. I mean, it's barely anything and I'm wrenching, but it does exist. So nothing. Drop. So we're kind of in a middle ground here. No play. Drops nice. Yeah, I think we're perfect here, guys. Um, we are dead centered, as you can see. Let's see if you can see. I can see. Perfect. Um, these screws are tight. We check those, of course. You can always, on this, you can check at the back. Um, pivot is through. Bearings are in. Centered. Everything feels normal. Um, there's no detent play. It's going to lock up on a slow roll which is something you want to check, honestly. No play at all. Again, test, shake, much better in my opinion than it was. Um, and that's something you want to check for, guys, is that slow roll thing. If you slow roll a knife out, it should lock up all the way. You should not have an issue where it's kind of like half locked up and you could spine whack it open. Uh, let's just check this lefty. Oh my God, that's so much better. Yes. So that's just going to sit there now. I'm going to, like, dude, the small things in life, I'm telling you. Um, that just made my day right there. Um, it's just that little bit, that 10% of action just is so much better for me. Um, I already love this knife, but there you go. I might have to get an LEXK again. I don't know. I'm a madman, but, um, yeah, so now what you do, and if you want to know why I didn't flick it at all, it's because I don't want to mess the Loctite up, um, yeah, it's not cured yet, but it might shoot around in there or something, jostle if I mess with it too much, um, don't use too much Loctite, because when that cures, it'll cure, like, around the pivot and shit like that, and it'll ruin your action, um, enough, just enough is enough, um, and then I didn't flick it because I didn't want to mess the the Loctite up. And you can drop it. You know, like you can let it drop to your nail and shake it closed. That's not jostling a lot, but a freaking flick, you know. And then you just don't touch the thing, okay? Depending on your Loctite, it might be two days. Like if you use that gel stuff or you use the stick, just wait two whole days. I mean, I'm telling you, sometimes I've had it where I waited a whole 24 hours and it freaking was loose again in like five flicks, right? Um, and if I would have just waited another day, it probably would have been fine. So I always waited two days when I used the, the sticks, guys. That is torture when you have a knife you freaking love or want to love. You just got it probably because you're taking it apart. Um, so I highly recommend this stuff, guys. I swear I will walk away. I could come back in probably 10 minutes and this would be well, it would be uh, cured enough that it would be fine. And then, you know, when I put it away again later, it'll cure the rest of the way. But like a, an hour or two would probably do it. But what I'd recommend, you know, do it. Usually you're going to do this after work or whatever at night. Like I'm doing it right now. It's 930. I'm just going to let this sit in my case till tomorrow. I mean, when I, when I get up tomorrow for Easter, I'm going to take this with me probably, right? It's going to be a little more of a gentlemanly carry tomorrow than my um, FSD right here, which is just huge. Um, I have carried this to my parents a few times because I go there every day with my kid. And um, yeah, my mom was just like, can you put that away? Like, it's just loud. <laughs> and my dad just hates me whipping knives out. He's His thing is he thinks I'm going to hurt myself. It's not because he hates knives. I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, that's it, guys. That's how you take apart the Trevor Burger Urban. This is, again, number one with number nine inside. I don't know. Um, thank you again to Mitty who sold this to me. Anyway, I love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I will catch you later.